Bible study, born for a time like this on July 10th, 2017. You are not limited by your circumstances. You are limited by your lack of access to truth. You were born for a time like this. There is more revealed knowledge of the kingdom of God than ever before. And along with that, there's also more opposition to the kingdom of God than ever before. Your determination, your commitment to walk as a son or daughter or father will bring amazing success or devastating failure. Don't wait for your breakthrough to be joyful. Be joyful so that you are in a position to receive breakthrough. The enemy will try to get you discouraged so that you will not have the courage and the strength to make godly decisions. And David wasn't being realistic when he faced Goliath, but David did not let the enemy in. David's success came from Christ in him. Jesus defeated the enemy by his declarations. What Jesus said and how Jesus lived was the same. Now Luke 4:13, 4, 14. And when the devil had ended every, the complete cycle of temptation, he temporarily left him that is stood off from him, until another more opportune and favorable time. Then Jesus went back full of and under the power of the Holy Spirit into Galilee, and the fame of him spread throughout the whole region round about. Jesus went into the wilderness full of and controlled by Holy Spirit. Jesus perfectly yielded to Holy Spirit to allow Holy Spirit to bring victory. By experiencing victory, Jesus came out of the victory full of and under the power of Holy Spirit. Notice the relentlessness of the enemy. The enemy put Jesus through a complete cycle of temptation. Then the enemy stood back to where he could not be noticed and strategically at a place where he could continue to observe the actions of Jesus. The enemy was relentless in attempting to find an opportune time and favorable time in which he could attack Jesus. And look at the result. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may find perfect peace and contentment. In the world you have tribulation, trials, and distress, and frustration. But be of good cheer, take courage, be confident, be certain and undaunted. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. You were born into a war and we have an enemy. However, Jesus persevered to emerge victorious over the world. Jesus deprived the world of its power to harm us. Now you can either live in a world and get the crap beat out of you, or you can live victorious in Christ Jesus. John 14, 30. I will not talk with you much more, for the prince, evil genius or ruler, of the world is coming, and he has no claim on me. He has no anything in common at all, and there's nothing in me that belongs to him, and he has no power in me. So anyway, the enemy is a liar. And the enemy works through deception. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide you to all truth. Jesus was completely dependent on Holy Spirit. Because of Jesus' commitment and determination to be led by Holy Spirit, even though the enemy continued to watch him from afar and continued to persevere to destroy Jesus, Jesus finished his ministry, revealing the ineffectiveness of the enemy in his life. Now, the enemy had no claim on Jesus. He had nothing in common with Jesus, and there was nothing in Jesus that belonged to the enemy, and the enemy had no power over Jesus. 1 Peter 5, 6-8 Therefore, humble yourselves, demote lower than yourselves in your own estimation under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he may exalt you. Now this is really important and often taught incorrectly. We humbly and humble ourselves by saying what God says about us. Now, people have a low estimation of themselves outside of Christ Jesus, but they have a very high estimation of themselves as one who lives in Christ Jesus. I am given the privilege to live under the mighty hand of God. In Ephesians 6.10, the word says for us to be strong in the Lord, to be empowered through our union with him. We are to draw our strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. And outside of Christ Jesus, I'm nothing. My estimation of myself outside of Christ Jesus is very realistic. I'm not equipped to win the battle that I have been born into. Now living in Christ Jesus, yielding to Holy Spirit, I am unstoppable, just as Jesus was. Living in Christ Jesus, I live out the victory that Jesus already obtained. 1 Peter 7 continues, casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all of your worries, all of your concerns, once and for all on him, and he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Now we're being taught how to have victory over the enemy. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. The key to victory is casting your cares once and for all on Jesus, because Jesus is already defeated the world. 
Now the definition of anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness or unease about an imminent event or something that has an uncertain outcome. The enemy uses this anxiety to pull us out of a place of being in Christ Jesus. The battleground is always in our mind. Living in the world, you will be exposed to situations that could give the appearance of having an uncertain outcome. You see, the enemy has to get you off your foundation of trust in Father. The enemy attempts to get you in a state of unease or disease. The lack of peace opens a door for even for physical disease, and disease starts in the mind and often then manifests in the body. 1 Peter 8, be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind, be vigilant and cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams like a roaring lion, in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize and devour. The enemy is relentless. The enemy is focused. The enemy has one objective, to destroy your life. The enemy does not have a lot of conflicts of schedule. The mnemonic realm does not have a date book full of social functions. The enemy has a very specific agenda, to kill, steal, and to destroy. Back to Ephesians 6. We are told to put on the whole armor of God so we stand against the attacks of the enemy, the wiles of the enemy. Now, the definition of wiles are devious or cunning stratagems employed in manipulating or persuading someone to do what the adversary wants. The wiles a ploy, a scheme, a maneuver used to lure and entice. A stratagem is a plan or scheme, especially one used to outwit an opponent or achieve an end. To protect ourselves against the wiles of the enemy, we must remain well balanced. I know if something's going to attack me, I'll take a stance that prepares me for an attack. I will dig my heels in, and I will be well balanced. Now, my enemy is described as a roaring lion in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and to devour. It's interesting that the enemy is described as a roaring lion, because the enemy will always first attack through deception. The roar is to throw us off guard and get our attention on potential danger. And the enemy seeks out who he, those who, who, who he really can destroy. He knows you. And the enemy just does not have the ability to destroy anyone. The enemy must first work through deception to cause you to position yourself to be very vulnerable. Now, the fruits of Holy Spirit are to keep you in place, a place of stability. Holy Spirit works through your life to minister characteristics of the kingdom of God that you meditate on in order to cause a transformation in your life. The enemy is constantly looking and seeking. Don't give the enemy an open door. Don't let discontentment position you to give the enemy access to you. We are to remain balanced and be sober of mind, vigilant and watchful. The way to effectively remain in this state is continually meditate on what and who you are in Christ Jesus. The work of the enemy is to get your attention off of Jesus and give your attention to his efforts to cause you to take on anxieties, worries, concerns, and care. You are either going to be effectively in Christ Jesus, rolling your care upon the Lord, or you will be in a state of anxiety, being troubled, and unable to effectively remain balanced. So, this so parallels Matthew 6.33. Jesus teaches us not to be worried or be anxious about anything. About the things that you're going to eat, drink, or wear. Jesus said, but seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. Then all things taken together will be given to you besides. Awareness of the kingdom of God, awareness of who you are in Christ Jesus, is the key to freedom and protection. When a person is always consumed by anxieties and worries, it reveals that their trust is not in a relationship with Jesus. And the access they have to the kingdom of God, people in that state soon open a door for the wiles of the devil. In like manner, when people do not first seek the kingdom of God, they have to go to the world for the things that they need. When people develop a dependency on the world, they open themselves up to anxieties, worries, stress, but also discontentment. Peace, joy, and contentment has the ability to keep you well-balanced and protect you. Seeking the kingdom first enables you to keep things in perspective. The devil is very crafty at what he does. The devil will demonically entice activities and desires that make you vulnerable. The enemy wants you playing in his playground, so unlike with Jesus. The enemy has things in common with you and has access to cause trouble or even destroy your life. Well, I have fruit trees that can always tell when the fruit is coming to peak because the fruit will draw a lot of flies. The garbage also draws flies. Anything that isn't decaying will draw flies. But how is it that fruit flies just appear in your house? Flies just have the ability to detect what they desire. 
The same is true in the realm of the kingdom of darkness. I don't know how it works, but the demonic realm has the ability to sense fear, worry, and anxiety, and the enemy has the ability to detect discontentment. The demonic realm carefully monitors the words that you speak. So it's interesting. Father gives us the authority and dominion over the earth, and it actually honors it to the point where he wants to be invited in. He does not just want to barge in to make corrections in our life, even if those corrections are for our best interest. Father wants to be invited in. In the same way, but in a perverted way, of course, the demonic realm seems to need our agreement to open the door to death, loss, and destruction. When the enemy attacked Jesus in the wilderness, Jesus only spoke the word of God. Jesus was not moved by emotions or anxieties. Jesus was moved only by his relationship with Father. Too many times people open the door for the demonic realm by displaying discontent and by grumbling and complaining. Jesus teaches us that the flesh can never be satisfied. However, people seem to be confused that they have an ongoing battle with discontentment when they spend the majority of their time walking in the flesh and feeding the flesh. Now, the flesh is not looking out for your best interest. There's no profit in the flesh. When you continually feed the flesh, you continually create the size of the monster that needs to be fed. The enemy has the ability to detect fear, discontentment, and discouragement. The enemy seeks those which he can devour. We open the door to the enemy by not being well-balanced, by not being sober-minded, by being easily offended, sloppy, lazy, vulnerable, and by taking risks that have been initiated because of the deception of attempting to feed the flesh and make it happy. The way to live in victory is to continually meditate on who you are in Christ Jesus. You must rely on Holy Spirit and yield the Holy Spirit and be led to all truth. You must allow Holy Spirit to minister to your spirit and to bless you with the fruits of Holy Spirit. You must remain consistent, content, rooted with good foundation, thankful, loving, giving, and well aware of your responsibility in the conduct that you walk in as being a son or daughter or father. We have opposition and we live in a war. Jesus showed us how to be successfully and to walk in this world, but to be effectively, to be a world overcoming. Jesus spoke his way out of the wilderness. He did not think his way out. The gospel isn't for your agreement, but it's for your transformation. Your history with Father creates a foundation that you live from. Circumstances and situations arise to get you discouraged, to get you to speak and act opposed to the blessing and the access you have to the kingdom of God. You have to learn to hear from Father by thinking like Father. It doesn't matter how impossible that some things look. It only matters what a person is able to believe because there's always a solution. The enemy wants you to be attracted to the world so that you become conformed to the world, so that you will live by the standards of the world, so that you'll be cursed by the limitations of this world. If we get true revelation of the kingdom and what we have access to, anything in the world will fail to get our attention. We must have the revelation that the devil perverts things to cause us to be attracted to them. No one overdoses from eating too much broccoli, but however, over 10,000 people each year die from alcohol-related, just car accidents alone. The devil entices through deception. The devil takes things that have the ability to control us, and to turn us into slaves. And then the enemy demonically entices, entices us to indulge in those things to cause us to be so discontent that he can lead us down the path to complete destruction. My contentment is not based on the behavior of others. It is received through fulfilling who I am called to be. When we get true revelation of the kingdom of God and what we have access to, anything in this world will fail to get our attention. You become discontent when you focus on taking instead of giving. Self-pity is calling God a liar and telling Jesus that what he did for you and did for us was just not enough. See, you were born for a time like this. I was born for a time like this. There is more revelation of Father and his kingdom than ever before in the history of the world. Father is completely satisfying. You must gain this revelation. The world has to grow in distraction to compete with the constant increase of the revelation of the goodness of Father. This generation embraces change like no other generation before. People are ripe for change. Things are coming to a head. Things are going to extreme. People will either go deeper into darkness, living for themselves, or they will embrace change, be transformed by the love of Jesus, and become agents for change as we walk out the revelation of Jesus. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Holy Spirit has been grieved, and Holy Spirit has been quenched. 
Holy Spirit needs sons and daughters who have the courage to walk out the authentic gospel. Holy Spirit needs to have sons and daughters who will embrace the truth that Holy Spirit has come to reveal through us. We now have the technology to efficiently and effectively reach the world. But what do we have to offer? Will people be taken deeper into darkness or will people be offered a lifestyle that is impossible through our own human strength? Revival awakens people to Jesus. A revival is a renewed attention or interest to something. A reformation is making changes to something with the intention of sending it back on its original path. Now it's time to revive the lost, to bring back truth and abundant life. Jesus revived us. He came to reveal truth. Our lives need to reveal truth. We have the technology to start a revival that escalates into a reformation. We can't be conformed to that which we are called to revive. We are a gate. A gate is a place of transition. Holy Spirit uses us to be a gate to usher in a revival that will cause transformation. We are used by Holy Spirit so truth is revealed through us so that people are gathered to Jesus. We are the gate, the place of entrance. We give Holy Spirit access into the earth. Holy Spirit ministers through us in truth. As we walk out the truth, we reveal truth to cause a revival. People are revived from a dark, dead state to be made alive. And then we need to reveal Jesus so purely and so relentlessly that we will cause a renewed interest or tension. That's revival. The renewed interest will go to becoming a reformation when we walk out Jesus to cause awareness. And then change breaks out with the intention of getting things back on the correct path. Because people are open for change more than any other generation has ever been. And because they are conditioned for change, when kingdom truth is revealed, they will embrace it. However, people will not embrace compromise. We can't bring revival if we have not been transformed to reveal truth. People live in compromise, in conditional ethics, and in conditional love. They will not be revived unless they are exposed to something different than how they now live and what they now embrace. People are open to change, but they will only change if they are introduced to something authentic. People will not embrace what they can't see. When we, who have the ability to reveal truth because we are filled with Holy Spirit, stop living in compromise and allow Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to the world, the world will embrace Jesus because they are coordinated and conditioned to accept change. However, these people who are hungry for change are also demanding because they have access to so much information. We will only get their attention if we live out a truth that can't be disputed. People are so embedded in darkness that we need to commit to be vessels for Holy Spirit, to reveal uncompromising truth so they will turn to the truth and the veil in their hearts and minds will be lifted. The kingdom of God must be revealed. The kingdom of God is the truth of Jesus. The truth of Jesus is the kingdom of God. Our lives are nothing if we do not reveal the ultimate that there is to reveal. All things are possible to the person who is able to believe. What are we willing to commit to do in order that we will position ourselves to be able to believe without restrictions? Effectiveness rests solely on our shoulders. We have been filled with truth. We have been given truth. Holy Spirit, without any limitations. Now Jesus said that Holy Spirit will lead us to all truth. Well, all truth has not been revealed, so that means we need to yield to be stretched to come the ultimate effectiveness, which is to reveal Jesus fully. The definition of theology is a study of the nature of God, and theology is only a theory until the truth of the theory has been established. Faith takes acknowledgement to experience. Faith is not just having the guts to acknowledge. Faith is a commitment to demand to see what you believe despite any opposition. But who you really are will determine what you will really do. When we receive the revelation that we are truth, then we will walk in truth. Don't allow the world to entice you to compromise. When you walk in compromise, you fail to walk out the truth of your life. And when you fail to walk out the truth of your life, you fail to fulfill who you were created to be. So when you fail to walk out your son, your role as a son and daughter, father, discontentment will drive you to find your fulfillment in the flesh. And since the flesh cannot be satisfied, the discontentment will be all-consuming and will lead you into a position of slavery. Now the devil tries to pull you in to making carnal threats instead of spiritual declarations. 
Now don't feel pressure to convince someone the gospel is true. Let the world feel the pressure to try to dispute Jesus when the gospel is revealed through your life and power, authority, and access to the provisions of the kingdom of God. Let the world feel the pressure to explain how a believer walks out abundant life. The demonic realm will torment the mind until you concede to give what the body demands, despite the potential disastrous outcomes. When you don't know who you are, you don't know what you possess. You don't know your purpose, so you are deceived not to be responsible by walking in your God-given abilities. Then you will be irresponsible by failing to steward the ability that was the basis for your responsibility given to you. So in closing, you must know how significant you are because the war is about you. You are not limited by your circumstances. You are limited by your lack of access to truth.